Module 1, Background, Work at Height in Construction. Until 2005, there were no specific regulations for work at height in the UK. Historically, work at height was often conducted with little or no protection. We've probably all seen the photographs of the Empire State's building and also of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Rather those guys than me, I hasten to add. Even though there's current legislation in place, there are plenty of examples where work at height continues to be done with no regard for safety, and in particular when using ladders, as some of our photographs show here. I don't know if the photographs are staged, but as we can see, it doesn't take the brains of an archbishop to point out that there's some unsafe practices. Injury statistics for construction. Work at height continues to be the biggest cause of workplace fatalities, both in the UK as a whole and in the construction sector in particular. Work at height accounts for almost half of the fatalities in construction. Over 1,500 construction workers have suffered either an over seven day injury or a specified injury as a result of a fall from height. And that's from the UK HSE statistics. Statistics particularly for construction. Most injuries are caused by falls from under two meters. Now two meters may not seem a great height, but falls from that height do cause a lot of damage. Obviously there's a lot of work at height gets done under two meters as well. The lack of a safe system of work has been identified as a common cause of fatal accidents when working at height. I should imagine that's a common cause of non-fatal accidents and serious injuries as well. So remember that a safe system of work is written in the section 2 to alpha of the Health and Safety Work Act 1974. Well, it requires the provision and maintenance of plant and safe systems of work. So when we think about a safe system of work, we can think about a written document, maybe. Remembering it is the output of a risk assessment. So you're going to assess the risk. And then out after you've assessed the risk, you've assessed the task, then you're going to devise a safe system of work. Quite often, safe system of work become documented information where it'll cover things like people, equipment, materials, and also the environment. So when we're thinking about people, we're thinking about training. So it's important to know safe systems of work certainly do prevent accidents. And we're now going to watch a video from CITV. Since the incident involved a fall from height, I think it would be useful to know how you approach this sort of work. Okay, well, working from height is risky full stop. If you can avoid it, you do. Other than assembling the roof on the floor and lifting it up by crane, there's not much we could have done. Should be able to reach from the top, but if we need more height, it's best to get the boys back in rather than improvise. Improvise? Well, yeah. Sometimes the blokes try and change the tower scaffold themselves instead of waiting for someone who knows what they're doing. And your team would have known not to improvise? Well, yeah, but I would have stopped him anyway. Do you think the risk and method statement properly covered the work activity? Yeah, I think so. Here is the updated risk and method statement. Read it, okay, understand it, and follow it. If you can't reach and need an extension, just ask. Don't go climbing off the tower and onto the roof or anything stupid, okay? Did anything of note come up when you did the risk and method statement? Not really. I mean, it was an improvement. To be honest, I wasn't that comfortable with the original construction phase plan. Why is that? Well, when we were working directly on the roof, there was proper edge guardrail, which is great. But to be honest, I wasn't that happy with the spec for the roof. I mean, it was practically tin foil. An accident waiting to happen. And a scaffold tower is the next best thing. Exactly. Nothing to worry about, mate. Double guardrail. This, unless you climb over it, 
It's totally safe. I thought we'd be latched on or something, or, or there'd be nets. Nah, this is way better. It's always best to prevent a fall rather than try and catch one. Anything's better than wandering around with cages hanging out your backside. Unless you fancy a nice short bungee jump with a nice sharp stop. Do I need to wear one of those chill belts for lanyards? On? Nah, not on the tower. That's what this is for. Plus, Commander King's calling off the downstairs. So they want to stay out. What, you'd rather Derek back the forklift into us instead, would you? So you're saying that all the significant risks were considered and all the appropriate control measures were in place. Everything's as it should be. Yeah, as near as. In my experience, it's it's never really the kid that fails. It's more likely to be... Um, Human error? Exactly. You don't really want to take shortcuts up there. Because the biggest shortcut is straight down. It's not going to be free. So, a short part of a video there, that, that video is part of a wider video from CITV, which I'll show you in a moment. But what did we see? We saw somebody being interviewed. We saw the health and safety manager, who's the lady, she was being interviewed by, as the, to as the story tells us, somebody from corporate. And that's getting prepared, obviously getting all the information from the incident. And what they say in the video is in preparation for the HSC visit the, the following day. So that was just a snapshot. We saw somebody standing on his toolbox and then falling over. So immediately, what do we think? Are we think are we are we going to take a person approach and blame the individual, or are we going to take a systems approach and blame the system? On immediate view, you could say, well, the young lad should not have been standing on that toolbox. He should be listening to what he's been told. But in the wider video, you can actually see the other operative that he is working with cutting corners himself. And as sort of came through in the video there, there is a sort of a lack of a, of a safety culture. There's an underlying issue sort of with the culture. If I just show you the, the other part of the video here, whereby you can go and watch yourself, it's 15 minutes, we're not going to watch it now as part of this. But this is now probably the director being interviewed by corporate. It is free to watch on the CITV website, which is a fantastic resource. The wider video does show that underlying issue with, with culture. The video goes through the method statement and risk assessments. And as you can see just from that short clip itself there, the risk assessment and method statements is getting, they, they, they do, they get pulled out and they get analyzed. I always say that all roads lead back to the risk assessment. So it's very important, your risk assessment, your safe systems of work that they are, I would say documented that they're signed off on, that individuals are able to undertake the work and that they've actually signed off to say that they've followed the processes as well. Obviously, not forgetting our training. Everybody must be trained. Okay, moving on. Accidents involving ladders. There are various causes of accidents involving ladders, including the ladder being an unsuitable option for work at height. So lack of or insufficient risk assessment. Again, this is the method statement. Also in that other video, they talk about the construction phase health and safety plan, a very important document, which alongside your risk and method statement is going to be requested by the HSC, should there be an incident. The wrong ladder used. Again, this will be identified in the risk assessment as the appropriate ladder that is required. Ladder positioned and placed incorrectly. This is going to go down to more down to training and the choice of the actual ladder user, or maybe the choice of the ladder user if he's been given the wrong ladder uh, by more senior management. The ladder not being secured. Unsafe behaviour. As much as we tend to you know, try and steer, steer away from blaming the individual, it is in my opinion and my humble opinion that sometimes the system can be correct and sometimes people just choose to act unsafe unsafe condition 
of the ladder. So the ladder should always undergo a pre-use check, which we will cover more in the following modules. So it's quite a short module, module one, but the key message is that work at height is a high risk activity and is the main cause of workplace fatalities in the UK. And now on to the key points. I suggest you take note of these key points because they may come up in the question set. Work at height is the cause of nearly half of the fatalities in construction. Over 1,500 construction workers have suffered either an over seven day injury or a specified injury as a result of a fall from height. So a specified injury, if you're not sure what, what that means, go to the RIDO regulations and you will see the difference between specified injuries because there's a change in the RIDO regulations a good few years ago. And nearly half of the fatalities suffered are due to working at height. Such an important topic. We also covered that most injuries are caused by falls from under two metres. And that a lack of a safe system of work has been identified as a common cause of fatal accidents when working at height. And finally, just a reminder that Section 22 Alpha of the Health and Safety Work Act 1974 requires the provision and maintenance of plant, but also and safe systems of work. That's the end of the module. Look forward to the questions.